It was last week itself that the American Heart Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics have come up with the neonatal resuscitation guidelines updated in 2020. What is important is that there is no change in the algorithm per se. And for details on the algorithm, you may refer to another video, the link of which I'll share in the description box below. Then what's the updation in these guidelines? First is that more focus has been placed on the clinical activities already described. Second is that more stress and re-stress has been placed on certain points. And the last is that a few points have been clarified even more. All this is based on numerous randomized control trials, meta-analysis and systematic reviews. In short, there are 11 points which have been revised restressed and clarified even more. First is that a lot of stress has been placed on the training of healthcare workers both individually as well as a team. With effective team behaviors like anticipation, briefing, communication, equipment checks and role assignment. Next is that cord clamping is to be preferably delayed especially in uncomplicated term or late preterm births and in other situations while respiratory cardiovascular and thermal transition is being evaluated and the initial steps are being undertaken. Now the terminology initial steps of resuscitation have been referred to as initial actions in these guidelines and two aspects of the same have been made special mention of. First is thermoregulation and second is airway control. In thermoregulation, skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother has been stressed upon even in healthy term babies and radiant warmers etc. are to be used preferably only in very preterm and low birth weight, very low birth weight babies requiring resuscitation. Next is that routine airway suctioning is to be strictly avoided. Tactile stimulation may be used to facilitate respiration and endotracheal suctioning for apparent airway obstruction in neonates delivered through meconium stained amniotic fluid should be based on expert advice. Inflation and ventilation of lungs, that is airway of ABC, are still to be prioritized, unlike resuscitation in older children, in whom the sequence is circulation, airway and breathing. Positive pressure ventilation is to be given in infants who are apneic, bradycardic or with inadequate respiratory effort and improvement in heart rate and breathing or crying signal the effectivity of positive pressure ventilation. It should be initiated with FiO2.21 in term and late preterms and with FiO2.3 that is 30% in preterm babies with pulse oximetry guiding titration of oxygen. Heart rate is to be initially assessed by auscultation and or palpation that is count for 6 seconds and multiply by 10 the old technique but pulse oximetry and ECG are to be used for ongoing monitoring in those requiring resuscitation. Chest compressions if there is poor heart rate response despite 30 seconds of effective positive pressure ventilation including that after intubation. The ratio should be 3 is to 1 and a two thumb encircling technique is to be preferred to two finger technique and this is something new which they have added. If vascular access is required, umbilical vein should be preferred to any other route. Epinephrine to be given intravenously rather than endotracheally due to faster response via the IV route. And volume expansion is to be done only and only if history and clinical examination are suggestive of blood loss. One may consider withholding resuscitation if there is no heart rate response in 20 minutes of effective resuscitative measures. So this is again something new which they have added in these guidelines. So to summarize NRP 2020, there is no change in the algorithm per se. It is the same as was in 2015. Stress is on anticipation and preparation by providers who train individually and as teams. Cord clamping should be preferably delayed. As regards initial action, thermoregulation, skin-to-skin -skin contact has been stressed upon even in healthy term babies and breathing is to be initiated with tactile stimulation preferably, airway suctioning to be avoided as much as possible. 
Positive pressure ventilation should not be delayed if required and the adequacy is to be assessed by increase in heart rate and or breathing or crying. Oxygen therapy should be begun with FiO2.21 in term and near term babies and with 0.3 in preterm babies. Pulse oximetry to guide the saturation goals. Chest compressions if there is poor heart rate response despite effective ventilation including endotracheal intubation in a ratio of 3 to 1 and with the two thumb encircling technique. Medications epinephrine to be given preferably IV if there is poor response to chest compressions. Volume expansion only if the history and examination is consistent with blood loss and one may consider redirection of care and withdrawing or withholding the resuscitative measures if there is no heart rate response by 20 minutes of effective resuscitation. So this summarizes in RP 2020. Thank you and do share the knowledge.